Hey craft server folks, this is Tall Tale. I'm going to show you how I made those bath bombs from the other video, the ones that I bounced against the table. I made enough, or I'm going to make enough for 300 grams, which should be three of my two inch bath bombs and maybe a little bit extra for a tiny bomb to demo for you. So into my pot goes my first phase. I have 192 grams of baking soda and I run it through a filter because sometimes my ingredients get a little clumpy. Citric acid is 96 grams. This is from doodadiesel.com. I found that theirs gives me the most fizz. So I'm gonna run those through because there are a few clumps even though the bags are new. It helps to run it through here just to make sure that I'm blending it well and that all of these extra little clumps are out. See like there. And if there's anything too big to fit through the sieve, I just throw it away. My sink is to my left. It's going right into my sink. My next dry ingredient that I'm putting in is SLSA. This is four and a half grams. This is one of my little surfactants that helps to move around oils and give a little bit of bubble. Cream of tartar. I'm not convinced that I need this, but it is something that hardens bubble bars and can harden a bath bomb too. So again, I'm gonna run those through the filter, make sure they're in a little clumps. And then my colorants, I'm using powdered lake colorants. These are, this is red and blue from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm going for a purple. This is gonna be an interesting experiment because I have no idea what those colors are gonna look like together. So you'll learn with me. This is a little 0.15 cc scoop that I get from Aroma Haven. Lotion Crafter has them. I think you can find them on eBay or Amazon too. I usually use one scoop for two bath bombs to get a pale color and it lightly tints the water. So now I'm gonna do is just move these ingredients around to kind of get the color pushed through and to make sure I've got a good start on blending my other dry ingredients. And you can see that the colorants sometimes want to ball up a little bit and make specks. I'm not gonna be too picky with them today because this video would take too long if I got all worried about those. So now that my powders are pretty well mixed, I'm gonna start with my liquid ingredients. I am using, for a liquid surfactant, I'm using DLS Mild, and then I've got Moringa Oil in here as the liquid oil. There's not a whole lot. I don't drizzle it in. It's very cold right now in my shop, so everything kind of gets um, thick. So I'm just gonna start it in there. I'm gonna finish all of this hand mixing without the spatula, because it kind of bothers me, but I've gotta move around that surfactant kind of quick, because it does have a little bit of water in it, and you'll see it's starting the reaction on my spatula. So I've gotta get that moved around before things get out of control with the fizzing. So I'm just gonna squeeze it through with my hands, move it around, flip it over, and that'll just disperse that into the mix a little bit, and I'll do a much better job. Wow, I didn't get purple at all. I kinda got a weird blue with that red undertone. Ha, huh. looks like I need to invest in some more lake colors for bath bombs. All right, this is getting to a good point. If there are any other little lumps or anything of color, I can run them through my hands. It's looking pretty good. And then I'm just using about 0.7% by weight of fragrance. This one is Nature's Garden Cracklin' Birch. I like manly scents for some of these. I've got some men clients that really love a nice bath bomb and Cracklin' Birch is my husband's, one of his personal favorites. So I'm gonna work that through, make sure that I get around to the bottom and really squeeze it all together, flip it over, turn it over so that the liquids are dispersed well throughout the mix. All right, here was the biggest tip that I learned over time. I was told that your mix needs to look like wet sand. To me, that looks like wet sand. To somebody else, it might look too dry. The litmus test for me, when you squeeze it together, not overly hard, my hands have tendonitis, I can't do much. If it holds together without breaking and you can drop it and pick it up without it breaking, it's usually wet enough. What I like to do though, because I know that my mixture dries out and this doesn't feel quite wet enough for me and it kind of breaks up a little bit, I'm gonna use a little bit of 
91% rubbing alcohol. You could use witch hazel, you could use 71% uh, alcohol. The point is just to get the mixture starting to react so that it sticks together without it going fully into the, um, the fizzing reaction. You just need to create kind of a little bit of glue. I do a little bit at a time because if once it gets too wet, you can't undo it. Holding it together, bouncing it around. I can drop it, I can pick it up. It stays in one piece. That tells me that this is pretty much ready to go. The next tip that I learned that really helped with my bath bombs is to fill your molds by just lightly dropping it in. This is a two inch mold. I think I got these from some eBay seller years ago. They hold about 2.75, 2.8 ounces, depending on what's in your blend and how tight you pack them. I don't like to pack them too tight because what ends up happening is they start to set the reaction off. So I do it loose. I just press them together until the edges about meet. Clean off the little equator. I'm a little bit off here, but that's okay. I clean, clean off the little equator. Give a little push. And then give it a little tap to have it release from the mold. Both sides. You can kind of hear when it releases. Sometimes you have to tap the equator depending on how wet your mix is and how much you're, you packed it. But when it does release, it's not quite ready yet. There you go. It starts to sound hollow. Pops off. I can flip it over. Pops off. And then I'll put it on something soft like um, bubble wrap to cure. It's still pretty soft right now, um, but it's going to stay and hold its shape. It's not going to crack usually unless I've overpacked it. So again, I'm just going to loosely pack the next mold and get going because once this stuff starts to dry out, it becomes hard to work with and I'll have to spray it again. All right, so lightly fill, start to squeeze together, trying to keep it halfway straight so that it looks pretty. When it's done, clean off the equator. I just give a little extra squeeze here just because I like to mess with things. Tap until you can hear it release. I could feel that one release actually. There's the first side. There's the second side. I'll put it aside and I'll just keep going. Another mold that I've used, these little cups that I had my ingredients in, stainless steel, flat little bottoms, a two inch. These used to be sold at Ikea. They were just condiment cups. I picked them up at the time because I thought they were cool. And then of course Ikea went and discontinued them. So I'm kind of out of luck even though I really liked them. They create a flat edge on the top and the bottom of the bath bomb, which I really never cared about and my customers never cared about. Um, but it was a nice inexpensive way to get a small mold. All right, and I squeeze it together. This one I could feel it wasn't really very well packed. It's probably going to float really nice. There. There. It was loose enough where I could feel that it wasn't even stuck to the mold. Another, this little cute guy, this inch and a half mold, I think I got it the same time on eBay from uh, a seller in China or something like that. Um, but these make nice pedicure and manicure size bombs and nice testers. I think they're about like an ounce and a half worth of product. So same procedure, just fill it up, match them up, squeeze it together. This one doesn't even feel like it's full. So I've gotten away with this before too. Press it, add a little bit more. If you had another color, you could layer a color on there. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that feels better. I could feel that the mold wasn't full. It was half empty. So it wouldn't have made a very nice product in the end. All right, and it's full enough where it can finally stick. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. There falls right out into my hand. It's holding its shape and I set it aside for a couple of hours to dry. I have a little bit left here. Let's see if there's enough to fill this little mani petty balm. It's going to be close. I might only get, oops, I might only get a half of a bath bomb out of it, but we'll try for you. These little ones I'll use later to show you how they dry and how they fizz. 
Yeah, not quite enough. I'm not going to give up though. I'm going to keep adding stuff to this and push my luck. Yeah, no. You can see it's not even enough to make it press. So I'll just do a half one. I try for you. Okay, it's pressed. Tap, tap, tap. I could hear it go hollow. That's what let, lets me know it came out. And we'll set it aside to dry. This uh, could actually even be used as an embed for a different color to come out. Um, but I'll show you that process in a little bit. I have a little bit of material left here. Let me see if I can do something for you. Here's a Pyrex pitcher with some warm water, kind of bath temperature water. Look what this mix does. Isn't that beautiful? Lots of fizz. It's filling up to the side. Ooh, it's going to roll over if I'm not careful and I don't stop talking. But for whoever it was on a craft server that was asking if it fizzes, yep, it sure does. I'm going to pour some out before I create a big mess. I just poured out about an inch of foam and it's still going. Look at that. Look at all that foam from one teeny little, what is that, about a tablespoon worth of, of mix. All right, I'll come back in about an hour or so and show you how they're drying, and then we'll take another video of them showing you how hard they are after they've had a chance to cure at least overnight. All right, thank you.